What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my 2016 Survivor Series predictions video. And, uh, yeah, this show should certainly be very interesting. If nothing else, it is a four-hour show. As of this recording, on Friday afternoon, they have not announced any pre-show matches. I would assume they're going to have a pre-show, certainly. Whether it be a one-hour pre-show or a two-hour pre-show like SummerSlam was, I don't know. But as of right now, there are six announced matches, and I will go down these six matches. And if there's one thing I'm looking forward to more than anything else, it is the fact that they will finally stop saying Fantasy Warfare gets real, or whatever the fuck that fucking catchphrase is. I'm tired of it. Tired of it. Anyway, let's get rolling. Number one on the list is uh, Kalisto versus the Brian Kendrick for the Cruiserweight title and the Cruiserweight division. Now, I think the language they've used here is perhaps telling in how this could potentially play out. So, they've said, if Brian Kendrick loses on Sunday at the show, if he loses the match, then the Cruiserweight division goes to SmackDown, right? They never said if he loses the belt, they said if he loses the match. So in my head, you keep Kendrick as champion, he gets himself intentionally disqualified thinking that will work, but the language was if you lose, therefore Kalisto wins by disqualification, all the cruiserweights move to SmackDown, and Kendrick is still champion, and they mostly don't go on SmackDown because they're going to have their own show called Live 205, or 205 Live, that's going to air after SmackDown, like that crowd's going to leave. But that's my prediction, is that Kalisto wins the match, but by disqualification and does not win the Cruiserweight title, and the whole division moves to SmackDown. So, moving on, speaking of things that could change shows, potentially, whoa, butterfly suplex from the top rope, uh... The Miz, your new Intercontinental Champion, uh, beating Dolph Ziggler for some random reason on SmackDown this week, is going to defend against Raw's Sami Zayn. Obviously, if Sami Zayn wins that title, he brings the IC belt to Raw, which I think is a tremendously stupid idea. Um, I think it is not a fair exchange if you have the IC belt go to Raw and the Cruiserweight stuff go to SmackDown. That's not... It's, if you're going to have a trade, it's mid-card belt for mid-card belt, not division for guys under a certain weight class for mid-card belt. Now, the reasoning I've seen is that they're going to leave that U.S. belt on Roman for a while, and they're going to leave Roman in the main event scene for a while. Certainly, he's fighting Kevin Owens at Roadblock. Ah, oh, Suplex City is just starting up. He's fighting Owens at Roadblock, uh, and he's fighting him for the Universal Championship. So certainly we can see the big dog with both belts, which leaves their no mid-card belt to fight over on Raw. So if they kind of steal the IC belt, then you have your mid-card belt for Raw. So I think the only reason that you would have had The Miz F5 coming up, F5 coming up, the only reason you would have had The Miz win that belt on SmackDown this week would be because they want a heel to lose to Sami Zayn at the pay-per-view on Sunday. They didn't want a face-first-face face match. They didn't want to have Zayn and Ziggler, which would have been a great match. Seriously. They didn't want to have that. They wanted to have their face-heel dynamic, and I think in that event, even with Maurice, even with the Spirit Squad, whatever else, I think because of the whole Roman Reigns situation with the U.S. belt, they're going to have the IC belt go to Raw for at least the immediate future. Not, per, per, perhaps not, not, not long. Uh, perhaps Sami Zayn wins it and then gets out of his Raw contract and, and takes the belt to, to SmackDown. You never know. But uh, that is my prediction, is that if you're going to have one flip-flop with the Cruisers, then you're also going to have the IC flip-flop. I don't see one doing it and not the other, but hey... Anything could happen in the WWE. Now then, moving into our traditional 5v5 Survivor Series matches. We have one that's kind of not traditional, where it is literally five tag teams versus five tag teams. So, 
Representing Raw, we have The New Day, The Club, The Shining Stars, Why, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, Enzo and Cass. Representing SmackDown, we have Slater and Rhino, we have The Hype Bros, we have Brizongo, American Alpha, and The Usos. Now, the rules here are if one member of a tag team gets eliminated, then that whole tag team gets eliminated. So, I think in the long term, short term here, it doesn't really matter. I think SmackDown uh, has a better tag division. I like SmackDown's tag scene better, whereas Raw is mostly just the New Day and whoever else. Uh, so, I think SmackDown manages to win that one, even though Raw is going to have an extra guy on the outside in the form of Xavier Woods or, you know, whoever is not in that match for the New Day. And here's Goldberg with a Jack Hammer, and boom, Jack Hammer. I'm pretty sure he won't have Brock up that long on Sunday. He's, he's getting up there in age. He's getting up there. So yes, your tag team match player, like Teddy Long is fucking hyped for this match. Uh, I think Team SmackDown takes it home. I don't know who's last man standing. I don't know who's last team standing. I'm not sure. I'm not going to go into, into those predictions, uh, but... I think at the end of that match, SmackDown stands tall. So, that moves us on to the women's 5-on-5 five -five match, which is representing Raw, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bayley, Alicia Fox, Nia Jax. Representing SmackDown, we have Nikki Bella, Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, and Naomi, with the bonus of Natalya as the team captain who's been quoting song lyrics lately. I don't know why. I mean, at least she's not farting, so I guess there's that. So, in terms of the women 5-on-5, five five, I think we've seen, uh, or at least I'd like to believe, that SmackDown has a better women's roster, or at least a more compelling, not necessarily better wrestlers, but a more compelling women's roster in terms of, you know, having feuds uh, outside of just having, hey, Sasha and Charlotte are fighting again. Like, there are more layers to the stuff there on SmackDown. And I think your long-term, short-term for the night, uh, I, had to, I had to stop saying that phrase, it fucking means, means nothing, but I think that SmackDown, again, takes home the women's five versus five, thereby raising the stakes for what is the final one for the men. And again, uh, I think Natalia gives them the, the, the advantage uh, for that. Uh, and here is a powerbomb from Goldberg uh, to Brock Lesnar. So, yeah, that's certainly... We're going to have Nikki and Carmella not getting along. You're going to have S Sasha and Charlotte not getting along. There are all kinds of little interdynamic feuds taking place within these matches. Uh, none of these teams are 100% on the same page. And... That's fine. It's Survivor Series, right? So, that being said, uh, that takes us into our men's five-on-five -five match. Representing Raw, we have Kevin Owens, your Universal Champion. We have Roman Reigns, the U.S. Champion. Chris Jericho, the master of the list. Drink it in, man. Seth freaking Rollins. And Braun versus uh, the SmackDown side. AJ Styles, the World Champion. Dean Ambrose. Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, who is part of the Wyatt family now for some fucking reason, Shane McMahon, what? And the SmackDown mascot, James By God Ellsworth, any man with two hands stands a fighting chance. Uh, so, Raw vs. SmackDown. I think that because your tag team match goes to SmackDown, and your women's match goes to SmackDown, that ups the stakes, and the Raw, or I'm sorry, the men's match goes to Raw. For a couple of reasons. Number one, I see Randy Orton turning on Bray Wyatt. It was all a ruse, RKO, out of nowhere. Um, I see Sh Shane McMahon, obviously, is the, the weak link in that team, even though he fought Taker Mania. It, it's Shane McMahon. And I think Raw having... Uh, Owens as the Universal Champ, Roman, who's, you know, making him look strong, Roman Reigns. Uh, do you really think that any team with Roman Reigns is going to lose? Come on now. And certainly, the secret, secret weapon, you know, is uh, Braun Strowman. Like, you've got Braun Strowman, who's undefeated thus far on Raw. Like, 
having Braun undefeated, having Roman being Roman, like, Raw team, there's no way. There's no way that they would job them out. So, the, the concession is that, hey, we'll give SmackDown the other two matches, but then Raw wins the important one so that Steph doesn't fire anybody. And then, if SmackDown loses, that can give Undertaker a reason to, you know, have some shit with the guys on that team, and perhaps maybe we'll get Taker versus AJ Styles. That'd be cool. Phenom versus Phenomenal One. That'd be awesome. Spear! Um, yep. And then just Goldberg. Bloody mess. Bloody mess. So I will get into that discussion uh, as soon as this jackhammer happens. Uh, and whether or not Paul Heyman interferes again. We'll see. That should do it for this match here. Really. No, it didn't do it. It didn't do it. Okay. I might actually finish this video. Th I might actually finish this predictions in the course of this. Wait, yes, two. Oh shit, son! I didn't expect that. He's gonna hit two in a row. That's crazy. Paul Heyman's pissed. He's pissed. That has to do it. Holy shit, Brock Lesnar. Okay, Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. Fantasy warfare becomes reality. Blah blah blah. Brock's gonna win this match. Like, realistically, Brock is going to stick around for, you know, his li li limited part-time schedule. Goldberg is saying that you're last. So he's, this is his only other match here. Um, Brock Lesnar has been fighting in some form of combat sport, whether it be MMA or wrestling, for the last, you know, how many years. And Goldberg hasn't worked a match in 12 years. It's going to be ugly. It's potentially gonna gonna be bad. Uh, it is quite possibly gonna have this this crowd in Canada, in Toronto, booing Goldberg, who ended the career of Bret Hart accidentally, and cheering Lesnar, who now resides in Canada. So that's gonna be the dichotomy of that situation. And uh, I'll be real real curious how that crowd reacts to that match. But I think in the end, Brock takes it. Not only because he has Paul Heyman, but just because he's going to be there uh, to benefit from the heat from that match. Right? Right? Anyway, I want to see how this is going to play out here. Uh, and uh, one last F5 to the man. Should do it. Uh, and I would certainly expect some blood in that match, most likely. Those are two old school guys who, you know, want to do it old school um, and have a real fucking just knockdown, drag out fight. Hopefully better than the match they had 12 years ago. Considering that Goldberg has said that he's fucking sore from just fighting the jobber guy's security on Raw messed up his shoulder. Like, dude, you're so out of shape from wrestling. Like, being in shape and being in wrestling shape, two very different things. That being said, Brock wins. Whether or not the crowd likes it, we'll see. I'm a tax slug. That was my, my predictions video for Survivor Series 2016. Thanks for watching. More videos every day. And I'll see you next time right here on this channel. And I'm out. Do, 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 do.